on it, but now we're going to react to Lords of the Fallen extended gameplay, and it looks pretty good, I hope. I'm very excited about this game, so let's do it. Welcome to Mornstead, a prominent region within the vast and sprawling world of Lords of the Fallen. In today's extended gameplay walkthrough, we're sharing an exclusive look at just some of the diverse and harrowing areas you'll journey through in your epic quest to overthrow a deer, the demon god. This is Skyrest Bridge. It is guarded by Pieta, she of the Blessed Renewal, one of the game's early boss encounters. Ooh, early boss encounter? We must right triumph against her in order to proceed with our holy charge to restore radiance to the six beacons of the Sentinels and thwart Adir's uprising. So far it looks great. Oh, holy Aureus. By your radiance, grant me the strength to continue to endure these dark days, to lay bare the path to salvation. And yet you now appear before me, a stranger, a betrayal made flesh, and one I cannot brook. Melee, magic, and ranged abilities are seamlessly interwoven. Alongside standard attacks, you can choose between catalysts, bows, crossbows, or throwables, mapping up to four additional magic or ranged skills to your controller for immediate access. This rapidly speeds up combat and reduces the need to swap between options. As with many of the imposing bosses you'll encounter, Pieta has two very distinct stages. Death is not necessarily the end in Lords of the Fallen. When slain in Axiom, the realm of the living, you'll resurrect in Umbral, the realm of the dead. We now have one final chance to survive. Though few and far between, these flowers denote special patches of ground upon which we can spawn a resting point, known as a vestige seedling. These come at a significant resource cost, however, and we can only spawn one at a time. The realms of Axiom and Umbral exist in parallel. Each world features its own unique pathways and... Pause here. He just said that we can spawn one of these you know points in each in each life all right wait let me let me backtrack here a little bit so i want to make sure we get this right this is interesting resource cost however and we can only spawn one at a time the okay. so it's a resource cost and we can only spawn one at a time okay well i mean like that's that's kind of interesting so it means like you kind of have to be uh a bit bit picky in terms of you know when you're using it and how you use it which is interesting another thing that i noticed though is is in the boss fight itself if you die you go you have one more life in the umbral but i didn't expect that from the boss fight itself i thought like that would be kind of like a different mechanic but that's quite interesting let's 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 keep going realms of axiom and umbral exist in parallel 
Each world features its own unique pathways, enemies, characters, and, of course, treasures. We can now use this crafted vestige to return to Axiom. Okay, so that's how we spawn back. Makes sense. Here into like the secondary realm at any time by raising the umbral lamp. Though be advised, this also renders you vulnerable to its inhabitants. Wait, 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 wait. We will now use the lamp to cross over to umbral, though doing so will consume one. Use the lamp to cross over to umbral. So wait, he said. They, you can use the lamp to see what's on the other side of the, like, in the umber world, but it makes you at risk for people or, like, you know, enemies inside that realm at the same time, even if you're just using the lamp. So that's kind of interesting. Let me, let me make sure we get this right. Though doing so, we'll consume one of our two... Now that's for going back. Let's go a little bit more back here can peer into the secondary realm at any time by raising the umbral lamp. Though be advised, this also renders you vulnerable to its inhabitants. So he says that it makes you vulnerable to its inhabitants when raising this, which means like by raising this, um, Andrew, let's go. Good to see you. New platform, same great content. You know it. <laughs> you know it. Thanks for stopping by. And you see that amazing little sword icon on your uh, on next to your name? It means you're a mod. Congratulations, Andrew. You're a moderator. Happy days. <laughs> yeah, make sure like the audio and like you know um, the stream is doing well. But I think. I think it says things are quite well, so we should be we should be pretty good. But uh, but yeah, good to see you here, Andrew. Thanks for stopping by as always, and congrats on becoming the Ozone's first moderator. Pretty cool, pretty cool, if I must say so. Um, honestly, sounds and looks perfect. Happy days. That that makes me. Makes me really, really, really glad. Um, you know, I, I had some issues starting right away, but uh, we, we, we made it work. So, cool to see that it's working well. Um, and, uh, yeah, now we're going to keep this up every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central European time, 9 p.m. for you, obviously, Andrew. But uh, keep this up every week, you know. Explore, explore Twitch and its community. Get some people more in the Yosem, you know. Why not? Why not? Um, but yeah, so as you're tuning in as well, we're just watching Lords of the Fallen uh, extended gameplay presentation that came out today. So just kind of like doing a bit of a reaction on it, and it looks looks pretty good. But let's let's keep going, let's keep going, and uh, yeah, let's make it happen. We will now use the lamp to cross over to Umbral, though doing so will consume one of our two lives, and it isn't so easy to return to the world of the living. What kind of enemy, enemy is that? Many enemies require a different approach to combat. This mendacious visage, for example, is only vulnerable when attacked from the back or when it reveals its true form. Okay, 
also a way of essentially getting some loot. You'll also come across permanent vestiges on your travels. As well as using these to return to Axiom, you can also level up your stats at these locations. Okay, so kind of like a typical Elden Ring, Dark Souls, Souls-like, you know, atmosphere. Three schools of sorcery can be mastered. Rulgar, Radiant, and Umbral, each specializing in a different area of Three schools of sorceries. So they have kind of limited, I guess, the possibilities when it comes to combat, though. Uh, Andrew, this is the um, this is the Lords of the Fallen, the one that comes out in October. They just released like an extended gameplay of this, so I just wanted to wanted to react on it because it looks looks really cool. Um, it's it's the Lords of the Fallen, you know, the Dark Souls, Elden Ring, you know vibe of it but they have like two different worlds so you use like the lamp essentially to get access to the umbral world of it um, and then you know you can essentially so essentially what happens is like when you die you get like an extra chance which you end up in the the death world and then you just fight there and you can kind of like you know go back later uh, as well and kind of traverse the different worlds and they have different mechanics in the game so you know We'll keep looking, and we'll uh, we'll see what else they they show for. But uh, but yeah, it's gonna be looks looks quite interesting. Kind of happy about this game. But having three different sorcery abilities, <laughs> you'll be doing all the damage as usual. Hey, you you know me with Elden Ring though. I was I was you know I was killing it in Elden Ring. So you know it's my my type of game. But co-op. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit back, do my magic, you know. <laughs> if there's like a necromancer, I'm definitely gonna do that, and then you just be, you know, smashing them buttons, you know, hard, <laughs> as as always. Um, but yeah, the game looks the, the the game looks great. Very excited about it. All right, let's keep keep playing. The arcane and requiring a different catalyst to cast. Our current build is adept in Rugar, characterized by devastating pyromantic attacks. Here's the thing I would like to notice too though, is that I really think it's cool when there are smaller enemies in a game that has like these magical effects. It's not just the boss itself, you know, and I think that's that's a nice differentia differentiation in terms of like Elden Ring and Dark Souls. Like, of course like there are enemies there with different kind of, you know, skill set and stuff like that. Um, but it's like more like typical minor enemies, you know, that, that can bring out these kind of magic skills. Maybe it's tied into different areas. I think that would be pretty cool if it is. So, so yeah. Let's keep going. An age-old borough built into the very Kill cliff face. Perch. Pilgrim's Perch typifies the verticality of Moonstead. There are myriad pathways stretching both above and below with hidden areas, treasures, and NPCs all awaiting discovery. Chicken! <laughs> 
There you go, let's go. <laughs> So it's raising one of those uh, soft, those, uh, um, what do we call, checkpoints? Not checkpoints, but safe, safe points. Okay, Molotovs. Oh, that's a crazy enemy. Let's As a back. lamp bearer, all players are equipped with a devastating ability, the Soul Flay. Ooh. By using one of a limited number of soul charges, we are able to extract the very soul of an enemy, ready to inflict significant damage. Oh, that looks cool. Wait, wait, so, so um, sorry, I didn't mean to go full screen here. Um, let's look back a little bit here. This is interesting. This is a new mechanic for sure. Let's see. Let's see if I can stop it in the right way. As a lamp bearer, all players are equipped with a devastating ability, the soul flay. Look at that. By using the soul flay. So essentially you pull out their soul with your lamp, which is sick, and then you essentially just can do extensive damage on the enemy because you kind of like pull out their soul so they don't have a lot of protection anymore. The real interesting part here though is like how many times can you do that? You know, like what are you sacrificing in order to do it? Because if you can do it all the time, like I mean like it might be a bit of a broken effect. So that's really the big the big question here. Using one of a limited number of soul charges, we are able number. to extract okay. the very soul of an enemy, ready to inflict significant damage. Another one. Ooh. Oh, that's a sick spell. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty cool. World looks pretty great. Looks pretty great though. Ooh. But how do you know that that's there though? Like, do you always have to go around checking it? The Soul Flay ability can also be used to manipulate the very environment when in Umbral. Okay. So here's here's a question I have though, which I think is quite interesting, and that's in terms of the, the um, umbral world, right? So, you have this lamp where you can always kind of see what's in the umbral world, right? And then obviously if you die, you go there, you know, for like a second chance. But you can also choose to go there if you sacrifice one of your lives, you know, so you can kind of explore that side of the world. The question is, like, in this instant, like, how would you know that that's, that's a pathway, you know? How would you know that? 
unless like maybe there's like no other way you need to go because I think the issue here is that you technically almost always have to kind of be holding your lamp up and see okay is there a pathway here where do I have to go uh, you know where's where where am I essentially gonna go with this uh, or it's like pretty obvious which I hope they have done in in a sense though I mean like I don't want to make it like too easy but where they kind of make it okay there's you know a few pathway options and one of them you know maybe if you explore you know in this open area there's a pathway for you to go or it's like you have to use the umbral side of things in order to actually you know go further in the map or something so they really tie in the worlds because if not I mean they just have to make sure that the worlds are integrated well enough essentially that I think is one of the key key elements for this all right let's keep going looks great though Thank you for following Lorraine. We're we're reaching we're about let's let's try to reach 10 out of 10 this stream. Let's go. Thank you so much. NPC, NPC. Yeah, they're not gonna, <laughs> they're not gonna spoil that on, uh, on this gameplay. Makes sense. We now find ourselves in Lower Calrath, an ever-burning district, renowned for Whoa. its displays of barbarity. Ever? Wait, 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 wait. They said, ever-burning district. Oh my God, my poor GPU. It's gonna suffer. <laughs> my poor GPU is gonna suffer so bad because of that you literally have to deal with like flames everywhere in this world all the time oh every mid to low level PC is gonna cry it literally gonna cry it's not even a joke <laughs> that's gonna be rough but it looks great though I mean like you know maybe we can do like lower settings <laughs> especially if we're streaming Nice attack. I like how their weapons are on fire too. That's pretty cool. Ooh, what kind of arrow shot is that? It's like a sleep sleep arrow. Ooh, that's that's a really cool effect actually. That's what I was talking about earlier. We're now going to invite a second player to join us on our journey. This is easily achieved at any of the vestiges. You can choose to fight alongside a friend or a randomly selected player. Okay. Either way, your co-op companion will remain at your side for as long as you or they choose. <laughs> as so, a radiant source. So Andrew, if you decide to play this game with me, you can be there as long as you want. So literally for five minutes and then you leave. <laughs> uh, that's funny. But uh, yeah, I think that's a nice effect. Uh, like, I guess the question is here is how they are doing it on Elden Ring. No, it's not free, Andrew. It's, uh, it's a paid game. But it comes out in October though. And it looks great. So you have some months. You have some months, you know. You can, uh, you can enjoy... You can enjoy Diablo up until that point, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it looks looks pretty cool. Uh, let's continue to see what else they say about this co-op. But what I was gonna say is that, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah. So, with the co-op thing, I think it's interesting in terms of how they're gonna 
if they're gonna do kind of the Dark Souls, um, if they're gonna do the Dark Souls Elden Ring way, where essentially, you know, once you kind of let people into your world, if people can kind of, you know, essentially try to get into that world and try to kill you, if they're kind of doing like that approach, or if it's literally just like, hey, if you want to play alone, you can, if you want to play with like a friend, uh, obviously they like do like random, but trying to like, I guess, minimize the whole like being attacked while you're playing with randoms or something, you know, in a already difficult, at least should be a difficult game. So that's kind of like an interesting take, but let's, let's continue to see what the co-op, co-op does here. Our ally is able to buff either character with various enhancements. Okay. Typical buffing. That really looks like a sleep arrow, I'm not gonna lie. Ooh, that's a crazy spawn. Lightning attack? That's cool. I really like how the the knives are glowing red to like have like a red effect on this. That's pretty cool. Damn, you can block that? Jeez. What is he doing? <laughs> oh, that is too good. Oh, boy's like, look at this. Boom. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Oh, my God. That's great. Oh. Come out of nowhere. RKO from out of nowhere. It appears our way is blocked oh. by an umbral entity. We will need to track its tendrils in order to locate and expel the source of its power. Okay. Yeah, they're really eating people. Yeet! <laughs> Boss area? Oh yeah, let's go. Finally, it's time to face off against the colossal spurned progeny, Scourge of Calrath. Holy shit, what is he doing? Is he playing with the bodies? Damn, that's crazy. What? What? No, 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 there's a third arm? What the? What the actual? No, 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 that's not how you're eating! What in the world? Though the arm is literally out of his mouth. That's... The lands of Mornstead await you. 
Pre-order Lords of the Fallen now and prepare to unleash the darkness on Friday the 13th of October. Friday the 13th? Lords of the Fallen. Wow. Ooh, you know what? I gotta admit though, it looks pretty good. Quite excited about it. Uh, I think you can do really well. It's uh, definitely had my interest, for sure. There are some interesting mechanics, of course, that we have to kind of, you know, evaluate and see as the months are coming now. I'm sure they're gonna, you know, explain some few few elements as they keep going. But, um, but overall, I, I mean, like, I'm giving this, like, you know, right now, I would say, like, 7 out of 10. Looks, looks very looks very interesting I mean like the co-op thing could be good um, you know obviously if it's like cross play with like Xbox and PlayStation and PC that's gonna be a big factor um, I don't know if that's gonna be there but it, it obviously you know you can play it on all platforms so hopefully they have that um, the two worlds are very interesting it's one of the reasons what really pulled me into this game because I think it's just it's it's a very new way of kind of bringing in like a, a different mechanic essentially and exploring two worlds in one game and I think I never seen anything like that so that's that's pretty awesome 